are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of this collection of short stories from India. Father may be an elephant and mother only a small basket, but dot 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 by Gogu Shyamala. Translated from the Telugu language by a bunch of translators who I am finally brave enough to try and pronounce all their names. I believe there are nine translators, so here goes. Dia Rajan, Sashi Kumar, A. Sunitha, N. Manohar Reddy, R. Srivatsan, Gita Ramaswamy, Uma Brugubanda, P. Pavana, and Dugirala Vasanta. Longtime followers of my channel may remember that I gave this book a book haul video of its very own because it felt even before I read it, like it was going to be a very special book. I will link that solo book haul video below where I do some reading and present some background information on the book and the author. Well, I'm happy to tell you that uh, for once, my expectations were met, if not exceeded. This was not a perfect collection of short fiction. Name one that is. But I loved it. It was a five-star read. It was so deeply engrossing and moving. So, Gogo Shyamala is from the state that was, is now known as the, the Telangana state, uh, previously part of, I think, the Andhra Pradesh state, but just a few years ago became a, a separate state within the Indian Federation. And she uh, speaks and writes in Telugu, and she is a member of the Dalit class. Dalit is a contested word that within Indian culture means the group of lower caste, including the untouchables caste. And untouchable is a word now that is not used, other than in kind of, kind of a historical sense. But those lower caste peoples that were so oppressed and put down and massacred by the upper classes throughout history until very recently. So my knowledge of these uh, peoples came through the novels of Rohinton Mystery, A Fine Balance, and Sunjeev Sahota, The Year of the Runaways, both of which narrate scenes of unbelievable violence perpetrated upon people from these lower castes, from the Dalit group in modern Indian history. Shyamala is a writer from the Dalit of the Dalit experience and the first thing to say is that these stories are much more joyful than they are uh, horrific. The threat of violence from the upper caste people that they live among and under the thumb of is ever present in many of the stories but Shaimala is telling other stories that get lost in that discussion without sugarcoating the reality of a living life uh, as lower caste people you were always faced with an, uh, uh, the threat of uh, violence breaking out at any moment but these stories in, in almost a fable like way at times celebrate the uh, culture the camaraderie and playful rebelliousness of the Dalit people in uh, many of them are autobiographical based on her own experience I, th I was challenged by them because they do not read like realistic Western fiction. Um, there's a lot of vocabulary that is difficult. There is a glossary at the back, Gogo Shyamala's World, and it is organized by subject heading, which is uh, the opposite of useful because you don't really know what subject heading to look at when you don't know what the word means. So you really have to hunt and search in it, but it's very useful if you can manage to navigate it and it gives you information on all the various caste terms, a lot of the mythology and spirituality of, of the people in this village, myths and legends, and a long list of other words. But you also don't need to look up every single untranslated word because 
the stories that she's telling, you can just sink into them and contextualize those words and just carry on, often times. So I want you to understand that you, you would be setting yourself up to encounter an unfamiliar culture with a whole array of untranslated language, but don't be put off by it. If you like a puzzle, this book is a rich one indeed. Uh, so many of these stories are about childhood and the games children play, and you can't help but delight in the playfulness of the children, uh, many of whom face the prospect of violence or certainly uh, just horrific racism in their lives, but even with those upper caste children manage to make friendships and make connections and play these wonderful games that you've never heard of but that are described in such rich detail that you can't help but wonder if Shyamala is using those games as some kind of a metaphor for the interconnected lives and the perhaps the way out of this m millennia old stratification of Indian society. I want to reread them because I think she's saying a lot very cleverly with things like the games that the children play and the way that it brings people, brings the young people together momentarily. Something else that upon a reread I would want to study in these stories is in so many of the stories, whether it's the children or the adults, people fall and it has a great symbolic narrative weight when somebody falls down. Also, uh, water is a huge thing. It's a huge thing in the economy of this Dalit village. And there is an explanation at the beginning of the glossary of the field well called Mota Bavi and the village tanks, Oru Jeruvu. And it's very well explained in, in a couple pages here to understand the centrality of those sources of water in uh, many of these stories and in the life of these people. The, the most contested thing, where politics comes into the stories the most, is over land and property. And there's things in the glossary and the other, there's a, a couple afterwards that are helpful. And I also went to Google to supplement that, to understand how, how big of a deal it was about who got the land and the way that the upper castes were trying to atone for their overly generous ancestors to snatch the land back from the Dalit people. That is the central aspect of a couple of the stories and it's really powerful. Another central thing, and this will be my, my last comment I think, festivals, deities and those kind of cultural, spiritual cultural things uh, are woven throughout the stories and one of the central ones is the Jogini. Jogini is a woman who is chosen within the village from the Madaka caste, which is a, an artisanal, untouchable caste. There's the socially acceptable description of a jogini, which is a uh, woman dedicated to temple service. But then there's maybe the reality underneath that, which is that she is considered the sexual property of the entire village. And they come from these uh, untouchable castes, either Madaka or Bengla. So one of the many powerful stories here is about a family whose young daughter has been designated to become the next Jogini upon the retirement of the old one who's seen better days and how he, uh, the father, tries to get her into school in a near, away from the town to save her from that. I mean it doesn't get much more misogynistic and, uh, and uh, bigoted than that to just put a woman, a young girl in that role for her life to be uh, to be raped by men in the village for the rest of her days and he uh, gets her away from the town and I don't know how much of that is autobiographical but certainly the more you read about Shyamala's life her parents uh, moved heaven and earth to get her out of the town and into a school and get an education the Jogini connection I've never heard is autobiographical, but that is one of the stories that I will never forget. It's also one of the most harrowing, and like I say, these stories uh, in the main uh, celebrate the community, the uh, playfulness and the resourcefulness and the joy in their work, the, the love of family, 
uh, in this incredibly oppressed people within uh, India. It's a challenging read, it's a puzzle, I loved it, I can't wait to reread it and I think you should give it a try. Thanks for watching.